Welcome to the Solid Oak Technologies Coverall Design and Tan Capture Demo. During this demo, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to capture design and tan in the form of a timing diagram. In addition, I'll demonstrate how to generate the assertions and sequences required for assertion-based verification. Timing diagrams are typically used to show the timing relationship between signals on a module interface or to show how data is intended to flow through a module. For this demo, I'm going to use the Wishbone SOC interconnection architecture single ride cycle as my demonstration vehicle. On the right side of the screen, you can see the single ride timing diagram from the Wishbone B4 spec. On the left side of the screen, you can see the Visio version of the same ti timing diagram captured with the Solid Oak Technologies timing diagram stencil. The timing diagram stencil is one of three stencils that come with Coverall. The first being the uh, Solid Oak Technology Logic Diagram Stencil, the Timing Diagram Stencil, and a third stencil, the Coverall Library Stencil. For this demonstration, we're going to only be concerned with the Timing Diagram Stencil. You can see there are a number of masters here in this stencil that you can use to create timing diagrams for your logic. So let me explain a little bit about what composes a uh, coverall timing diagram. This first block that you see on the top left shaded in yellow is a block that's called the TD sequence block. And the purpose of this block is to give the, the sequence generated from this timing diagram a name. So when coverall generates the sequence you're going to see this WB underscore right name embedded in that sequence. And then you create the timing diagrams using the stencil masters in rows and columns. The rows being signal names here I'll highlight the clock row for you, and you see the clock row here. And then the columns being the actual clock cycles. Here is the first column of this particular diagram. And as you can see, I've mapped the names of the signals here in the Visio diagram to those that originated from the wishbone. I'm doing only these signals from clock down to cycle, um, cycle underscore O. I am not including the tag signals in this particular um, demonstration. So what is this circuit showing us, this picture that we've depicted over here in Visio? Basically it's a three cycle write. And the way the wishbone cycle works is the wishbone outputs um, the address and the data, write, enable, select, strobe, looks for the act cycle, and then also outputs a, cy uh, a cycle signal. Um, once these outputs have been placed on the bus by the wishbone, it waits for the act signal to go active and then captures the data on the rising edge of that clock. So in this column right here, we would be capturing the data. So what I've depicted here, um, if you take a look at the address um, signal here, there is a constant value here, capital REG0. Um, as is typical in the Verilog language, you use um, capitals for parameters. So I've defined a parameter somewhere that that gives me the address of a signal called reg0. And then you see down here at the bottom I've added uh, an additional signal which is the actual internal register which corresponds to this uh, parameter reg0 which is the register. And as you can see in the third cycle the register takes the value of whatever was on the dat0 bus. And so what this particular drawing is depicting is a write to reg0. Um, one other thing to notice here is there is an assertion placed here, and you place assertions by using the um, assertion master. There's an assertion placed between the strobe underscore O signal and the ACK underscore I signal. And in here there's some text. That text um, tells you that this assertion is a one to two cycle assertion. So uh, we've depicted a single cycle here. If it were two cycles, there would be another wait state. So I'm going to go ahead and run this for you and show you what coverall generates from a diagram like this. So let's bring up coverall. And we invoke coverall by um, going through the Visio add-on interface. And coverall comes up in shell mode. So let's go ahead and run coverall. And here you see the coverall GUI comes up. A couple of things to notice here about the coverall GUI. Um, you have to define a log file and you have to define an output directory. For this demo, I've 
place the log file in a directory um, test, T-I-M-D-I-A stands for timing diagram, and I've named my log file coverall.log. I've also used this same directory as my output directory, and this little graphic below there shows you that all the assertions will go into the search directory. Any RTL created would go into RTL. Uh, verification benches would go into Verif, and formal scripts would go into formal. For this particular demo, I'm not going to be generating anything but assertions, and so I've turned off the RTL bind module test bench in formal. So when I go ahead and click the run button here in a second, um, all of the output's going to go here into the assert directory. A couple other panes you need to know about on this particular uh, window. There's the console pane here. The console pane has five tabs. Um, first tab being a summary. In this pane you're going to see um, output from coverall as it processes um, the drawing uh, that we've created. And any info warnings, errors uh, will show up in these other tabs. And at the top there's a statistics tab and once we run um, the, the assertion tab will pop up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run now. And here you get um, the overwrite um, pop-up. Since I've run this before, Coverall is warning me that I'm about to overwrite the assertions in that directory, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to do that. All right, so Coverall has created uh, all the assertions and sequences for this particular drawing. And as you can see, um, since it is a three-clock cycle drawing, you would expect to see um, three lines here in your sequence, each one for each clock cycle. And basically what it's done is captured those signals that we have indicated that are part of this particular transaction here in, uh, in these lines. And then finally, in this final line, you'll see when the write occurs that the value of reg0 actually takes on whatever was present on the um, DAT underscores bus. So we have one sequence and one assertion that was uh, generated by um, Coverall. And I want to show you a little bit of the debug feature that you can use here with Coverall. Um, you can click on this particular assertion and it, um, sorry, this sequence name, and it will show you where that sequence is in the file. And you can also click on this assertion, and it will show you where the assertion is in this file. So as part of this demonstration, I'm going to add another little assertion here and show you um, some of the capabilities of the assertions. So I'm going to add an assertion here between um, the strobe and the, and the cycle signal. And one thing to note here is that this particular assertion is a same cycle assertion. As you can see, these two signals transition in the same cycle. And so we would expect uh, uh, coverall to process that a little bit differently than assertion that would go from one clock cycle to the next. And what you're going to see is this particular assertion here, it used the non-overlap operator. For a same cycle, we would expect coverall to use the overlap operator. So let's run that again, and you will see that coverall does indeed take care of that write the files again. And here we have the second um, assertion, strobe to cycle, and sure enough it's used the uh, overlap operator. And we can go back as we did before to debug this and click here and it shows the, um, that that's the assertion. I'm going to go back real quickly and describe the statistics tab for you. Um, cover all outputs page statistics first and then statistics for the entire document if there's more than page you would see a summation of all the statistics for all pages but since this is a single document um, single page document you're only going to see these same assertions both up top and down bottom here um, what coverall gives you is some page statistics statistics and then it, it gives you the drawing statistics for that particular page how many shapes how many clock cycles it found how many signals and then it tells you how many sequences and assertions that it created for that particular page. So in our case, it created one sequence and two assertions. Okay, I'm going to go back and, and to, sh to give you a little bit more feel for how um, you create these diagrams in coverall. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the wishbone spec here, and I'm going to make this drawing a little bit bigger. Um, all, all coverall drawings have a couple of items on them. Obviously, if you're doing a timing diagram, you have to have a timing diagram uh, drawn on there. But you also need to have this title uh, block placed here. And inside the title block, you notice there's some, some text here. And basically, the file type defines uh, what kind of assertions you're going to generate. And for our demo, we're, we are generating uh, system barrel log assertions. Uh, the second item here is called the file name. And this is the assertion file name, so our assertions will be uh, placed into a file 
ltdemo.1 and CoverAll will automatically add the .sb uh, since we're doing system Verilog. Um, two other texts here. Uh, the RTL file name, um, if we were to include this timing diagram as part of a bigger module with logic diagrams and FSMs, you would have to define that RTL file name here. And finally, all timing diagrams require the option TD be placed on the options line. Um, the other thing uh, to mention is that CoverAll requires um, page names to be defined with only lowercase underscore and uh, numerics. So let's go back to our timing diagram. One signal we didn't really, I haven't really discussed these signals at all, but um, uh, they are pretty much typical microprocessor type signals with address, data bus, uh, write enable, um, a select line. The select line is a byte select line. So as you can see here, we have, um, we've defined it as a four bit quantity, which means this would be a 32 bit bus, which it would have four bytes. Um, strobe, ACK, and the cycle signals, which are basically the signals that, uh, along with write enable transfer the data across this bus. So what if we we wanted to um, test this bus for byte write? So this particular cycle uh, tests a 32-bit write. Um, if we wanted to test this for byte writes, then we would have to augment this, uh, this particular timing diagram to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you how we might go about doing that. So I'm going to grab um, Reg, the reg zero bus here, and because we're going to do byte writes, we now have to break this bus up into its individual byte components. So I'm going to copy and paste that down here. Generate this bus quickly, and here you see I've got the the four bytes now defined, and I have to go back and change the bit widths of this so that it matches the bit widths on the actual bus. And note while we're doing this that we're not actually changing this particular uh, sequence or assertion because it's going to yield the same results whether it's 32-bit um, or as we're breaking up now and making it byte-wide. But what doing this, breaking it up this way is going to allow us to do is going to allow us to go ahead and generate timing diagram with um, individual byte writes shown. Okay, so now we have the basic diagram that we started with, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a section. Well, let, let me first show you how you would place individual blocks. So I'm going to I'm going to place the the clock macros individually and show you how you line those up. Um, right now I've got um, I have turned on the dynamic grid. So as you can see, as I'm placing these, it's it's basically placing them in line. Uh, that's a good that's a good option to have turned on. It makes it much easier to to add these uh, masters to the to the uh, page uh, quickly and efficiently. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the address, data, write enable, and select. Um, signals. In fact, I'm going to grab everything all the way down to cycle underscore O here. And I'm going to copy that real quick. Since this is going to be identical to what I've already done for the next um, the next right here. Um, the only thing I really need to change here, and that's off just a little bit. I'm going to move that up just a little bit to line it back up with the signals that are already there. Okay, now they're all lined up properly. Um, what we need to do is change this select bit right here and tell it that we're only going to write the lower bus. And I'm going to get rid of these assertions because we've already got those. We don't need to duplicate those. And now we have to do something down here with our data bus. And so um, this cycle is going to be a little bit different because, um, and I'm going to show you right now, right here what's going to happen is in this clock cycle, that um, dat underscore O is going to go away. So we're not going to be able to capture that. Um, down here on, uh, for this next cycle. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this and let's change it to a format such as this where we tell CoverAll that um, this cycle 
is basically in this cycle on um, reg zero, not my zero, reg zero is going to retain its value here. So it's going to go to uh, reg zero 31, 24, 24, and it will also hold its value in this, uh, in the next cycle, and it will also hold its value here since we're going to go ahead and be doing a byte write instead of writing the whole bus. So I'm going to grab this section that we just created. Oops, got too much there. Grab this section. And I'm going to move each of these in place here. And then edit them. Okay, I now have all these in place, and if I edit these bit bits, okay, so now we've represented the bus properly in this first cycle. And what we need to do is, obviously, the data is going to change here, so let's get rid of that continuation there. And we can add um, a, a data to data uh, transfer here. And in this case, once again, in this cycle, we would expect um, reg, reg 0, 7 colon 0 to change to date dat 0, 7 colon 0. Okay? So, <coughs> So that shows you um, how to augment a timing diagram that you already have and add some more features to it. One other thing you can do, and I want to show this uh, to you real quickly, is you can actually add another um, sequence to the same page, or you could put this on another page. But I'm going to grab this first sequence here uh, that we created. First three clock cycles. Oops, missed that last clock cycle. And I'm going to copy that and place that below um, the sequence that's already here. Let's just go ahead and place that right here. And now I'm going to change this to, to write one. And then I am going to um, actually have this write to the second byte in R. So this would actually write to um, this byte, and these bytes would remain the same. And the way we can show that is we can change these values to um, the same values that we have up here. And so I'm going to go ahead and grab this little section of the design. that down here. Oops. I'm going to place that down here in place of these signals. I'm going to place the right one. Okay, so now I have a second timing diagram here. Let's get rid of these assertions because we don't want to duplicate those. And now I have two timing diagrams. And let's go back into coverall and go ahead and run that so you can see what that looks like. Write the files again. And here you can see in coverall it's created um, two sequences, uh, wb underscore write and wb underscore write one. First one being six clock cycles since we changed the width of that. The second one being uh, three clock cycles, and then the the uh, two assertions that we had from our previous. One of the other features I wanted to show real quick: um, Coverall uses the wildcard operator when it's uh, showing the uh, generating these equivalency statements. Um, in this timing diagram, 
we want to say that reg zero is a, is going to be equal to reg zero, and this one reg zero is going to be equal to dat zero. So if there are any x's or z's in these particular um, signals, uh, that's not going to cause coverall to fail the assertion. Uh, the assertion will still pass, and that comes in real handy if you want to put constants in here where there are certain bits you don't care whether they change or not. Okay. Um, one of the other features I wanted to show you real quick was the debug feature here. Now that we have two sequences on here, let me make this uh, diagram a little bit smaller. Bring this guy up so that we can see this. Okay, since we have two sequences on here now, I can come and click on the WB write one sequence and Here's the WB right, and here's the WB right one sequence, and you can see coverall will show you which sequence is which. Okay, uh, that's the demo. Thanks for watching.